Number 18. Using the Bohr model, determine the energy in joules necessary to ionize a ground state hydrogen atom. Show your calculations. Okie dokie, pretty simple enough. So let's first draw a diagram. They want hydrogen, and hydrogen is found here on the periodic table, right? So let's just say that I have H, and I'll put a circle around it. So this is the nucleus of hydrogen. And now, if this is over here, from chapter one, you guys should tell me how many protons and how many electrons are in a hydrogen atom, right? The atomic number, A, is the represents the number of protons, right? So here, the A value is 1, so we know that the number of protons should be 1. So that means that there's a plus 1 inside of the nucleus. Remember, the protons are where the nucleus the protons are in the nucleus, right? So I just have literally a plus here, right? Just one. We don't care about the uh, neutrons because they're neutral. So overall, you have a plus one charge inside of this nucleus here. Now, how many electrons are around the hydrogen nucleus? Well, tell me how many electrons are in the hydrogen atom. Ground state means that it's basically the simplest state. The simplest state, and there technically is no charge. So there's no charge for an element that's in its ground state. So whatever it's on the periodic table, that's what it is. So when there's something that has no charge, remember the number of protons will equal the number of electrons. So if there's one proton, that means that there has to be one electron. And electrons are found outside of the nucleus in the electron cloud. So there would be one here. And we went over these shells or principal quantum numbers in the last two questions. So if you need a little bit more refreshing, go back to number 16 and 17. We talk about this type of drawing in those specifically. All right. But now just know that this is the first shell off of the nucleus, so this would have n equals 1, right? And if it was the second one, it would be n equals 2, and 3, 4, etc., etc. And just know that the n represents the shell number, which also is the same thing as the principal quantum number. Quantum, whoop, quantum Okay, so this would be like a kind of drawing of what the hydrogen atom in its ground state would look like. Now we just need to show the calculations. So, with Bohr's model, you will use the following formula, and it's pretty simple. E of any shell, so the energy in any shell, equals negative k z squared over n squared. So let's break it down what each of these mean. This is the energy of a certain shell, right? And this would be in the units of joules. The K represents a constant number. So you might have to memorize this one if your teacher or professor doesn't give it to you. It's also called the, called the Rydberg constant. Your um, textbook uses K though. So I'm just going to say K will always equal 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. So memorize this value. It will be a constant number when we use the Bohr model. Z is called the nuclear, nuclear charge. It's just a fancy way of saying the charge of the nucleus. So nuclear charge, charge of the nucleus, whatever is inside the nucleus with the protons, that's what the Z number is going to be. And the N represents the shell number of where the electron is found. So now let's just plug everything in. We're solving for the energy in joules, so we're solving for E of the certain shell. And negative K, this is constant number, 2.1. 7, 9 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. Actually, I, when we do the math, I usually don't put in the units, just as long as you know what comes out, times Z. Now, for hydrogen, what did we say the charge of the nucleus was? There was only one proton, which means that the nuclear charge, Z, should be a plus 1. 
and that's all over the N number. Where is this electron located for the ground state hydrogen atom? Oh, it's N equals 1. So this would be 1, right? And both the Z and the N have to be squared, so square this and square this. So now all you got to do is just plug it to the calculator. So technically, the energy in that certain shell would be, well, 1 squared is 1, divided by 1 squared is 1. So it would just be literally the K number, negative 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th, and the energy will always come out in joules. And that's your answer. Box that answer off. This is the answer for 18. Pretty simple, straightforward um, calculation. So yeah, hope this helped. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you want to, you know, get all of our questions coming in directly into your YouTube channel, um, click the subscribe button. It'll help us out a lot too. And I thank you so much for that. I'll see you guys all in the next question. Bye-bye.